Hey folks, Todd Tremonti here with another one of our client success stories. Is it too good to be true? Can you sell your home over the average price and under the average time? Can you expect that outcome every single time? Well, we're here with Jeremy Payne, one of our marketing specialists. Now, if you're out there in the world, you may have heard of his role as a listing agent, right? In our industry, that's the normal terminology. We kind of joke around. We don't like that title because it really implies that this is an agent that's going to go put you on a list, right? And unfortunately, that is what happens a lot of the times, right? Exactly. Put it on the MLS, take a sign in the yard, good luck. Well, that's not what Jeremy does. That's not what our team does. So I'm going to just ask Jeremy some questions about a recent experience that some of our clients had and let you listen in and hear, is this too good to be true? So I know you had some sellers recently that tried to sell their house with another agent, right? They actually for quite a while and it didn't go so hot. Just we kind of want to introduce that to us and then we'll pick it apart as we go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So we get calls often. It's like, hey, we're listed, not kind of getting the result we're wanting. And uh, can you guys do something different? You know, we heard you on the radio or wherever. And so uh, some of our uh, clients in McKinney had reached out and they had been listed for over almost two months, over a month and a half and had had some activity, but nothing substantial, no offers. Uh, they were in a fairly fast moving neighborhood. They thought they were doing everything right. You know, they didn't have a lot of direction. Mm -hmm. And they said, man, can you help us? We need to sell, we need to buy. And uh, we went in, they, they canceled their listing and, and we started the process and overnight we had an offer. We actually raised the price from where they were previously listed Love and it. Uh, sold it in first weekend. Uh, amazing situation, everything closed smoothly and uh, got them off on their next venture. Love it. So a couple of observations here. First, let me be really clear. This client contacted us, right? So Correct. there's sort of an ethical issue in our business, which doesn't exist in other businesses, by the way, where when someone has an agent, as an agent, we, we really don't go poach that business. It's an unethical thing to do. Now, there are some exceptions to that. And by all means, if someone calls us and says, I'm shopping agents, then we're going to explain to them what we do differently. Yeah. And in fact, in this case, it was a past client of mine that was friends with them and they lived down the street and they were like, Hey, you should really call Todd yeah. Tremonti's team. Like yeah. they did unbelievable work for us. And so that's when, yeah, like you said, they reached out. Love it. So just, just want to clarify that because we always want to operate above board with everyone's best interest in mind. And of course, legally and ethically, a couple other things. Jeremy does this all the time. This, it, this, tr I opened up with, is it too good to be true? No, it's not. Um, his average sale prices are well over 7% over the average sales price. And right now, Jeremy's averaging, I kid you not, it sounds too good to be, it does, it sounds unbelievable, 10 times faster than the market average, right? I think it's actually more than 10, but <laughs> at some point, I don't even believe it. But, Round down. Um, so, so to point to this specific one, we're talking about McKinney, Texas, really, you know, in 2020, which is has been a, a pretty screwy year, right? But this is a situation where they were on the market and you didn't get real specific about this, but they had a pretty good number of showings on their house with this other agent. So while I certainly think there's a clear difference in what you were able to do and that agent was able to do, and we're not going to name any names, but they were at least getting some attention on the property. People were coming to see the property. So it's even crazier that a bunch of people were coming to see it and they got nothing, no offers. Not only did they not sell it, they got no, nothing that was willing, they were willing to even really entertain. So then you come in, we come in, our whole organization, our team comes in, and within a day or two, you raise the price. I want, I want you to tell me more about that in a second. You raise the price and then had it under contract at obviously a number they were really excited about, which you already spilled the beans, was more than they yeah. were even asking before, That's right. more than they of course thought they would ever get. Yeah. And then of course it was really, really fast and it's already closed and funded and they're really, really thrilled. So let, let's yeah. go back for a second. What in the world possessed you to raise the price when they had a bunch of showings, it had been on the market for more than the average time on the market in that market at that time and hadn't sold, why would you raise the price? Yeah, I mean, we looked at it from a lot of different angles and and they kind of had a bottom line number. They hadn't owned the house a super long time, but they needed to get out and they had kind of thought they run the numbers and said, well, this is what we need to sell for. And they basically told their agent, hey, here's what we want to list it at, you know? And the agent said, great. Um, Red flag. 
Yeah, right. And uh, and so we they, once the, the listing was fully canceled and, and I kind of had a conversation with them, uh, I went in and said, look, guys, uh, this house is worth more than you're listing it for. Um, and they believed it, right? Because there was a lot of activity. But again, any real estate agent can put a house on the MLS. That's mm-hmm. not hard to do. It takes a few clicks and the world will see it. Mm-hmm. But the way that the world interacts with the listing, the way they mm-hmm. that phone calls are answered when somebody calls about the listing or the way that the showing goes when they're in the property, all of that, the way you handle those things will absolutely affect what a buyer thinks, what they feel and how they go and tell their family about it and what their agent says they should do. And so we went in and changed up everything we could right. about the experience because the viewership was not the problem. The problem right. was the conversion. And that's where we have, as you know, have built this system around mm-hmm. um, finding ways, not just to get people to see the property, but to fall in love with it while they're there. And uh, and I told him, I was like, look, this is a risky move, but I feel extremely confident in what we do. I love think it. we will get more activity at this certain number because of, and I went through showing statistics and I looked at what other buyers were looking at in the neighborhood. and. Um, it yeah. turned out perfectly. I mean, so obviously I'm a little bit of a marketing nerd and, and like, that's my world. That's what I love to do. Jeremy is better at representing a seller in the marketing of their property than I ever was. First of all, because he's super gifted and super smart and has a great track record. Secondly, because he gets to focus on just that. Right. So congratulations <laughs> a on being great at it. B the there are marketing stories all throughout history of, 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 price strategy is what I'm getting at, right? So sometimes the strategy is just wrong and all you do is change the number and it makes a big difference. Now, that's not what happened here. But if that were the case, just the ability to understand the market well enough to say, let's just change the number, that would still be tremendously valuable to a seller. But that isn't what happened here. We didn't just change the price, right? You you alluded to it, you changed the price and everything about how the property was presented to the public because it had already been presented mm-hmm. to the public. Right. They had already gotten a lot of eyeballs on it. A lot of people had already come to see it. But I think more valuable than any of that is then how we represent the seller and represent the property. And I always tell people, it's the story we're telling about the property and the way we interact with an interested or disinterested buyer or agent or their mother-in-law or their inspector or their appraiser or their mortgage lender or all those things. And a really good agent, real estate agent, is interacting with all those people, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. So um, is, is there any, I mean, we would, it would take hours to talk about all that. Is there any one or two things that you feel like maybe on this specific one or just as a whole that when we come in and make those changes really works or really causes sellers to realize how different we really can be? Is there any one thing that you love or that happened here? Yeah, there's there's a few. If I had to kind of narrow it down, I think this house specifically was, it was in amazing shape. The sellers, again, it was fairly new. They hadn't lived in it for a long time. And, um, and nobody knew that the house was in great shape. And so we spent a lot of time making sure people had unbiased third party uh, information that showed this house was great. Pre-inspections, contractor info. Okay, I gotta um, call a quick timeout. Okay. okay. So this is great because we're illustrating a really good point. So if you're watching or listening right now, I want you to lean in really close and pay attention to this. Um, what Jeremy is saying is we put a lot of effort to change a potential buyer's opinion, confidence, emotions about this house before they ever came to see it. But this client already had a bunch of people coming out to see it and the house was already in great shape. So this sounds like it doesn't make any sense. We put a lot of effort into making sure people knew how great a shape this house was in. But they had a bunch of people come to the house and see how great a shape it was in and they didn't make offers. So on the surface, that sounds dumb. Let's acknowledge that. On the surface, that sounds like you're just talking me in circles. Maybe you got lucky on this one and you're just trying to explain away how you're the one that landed with the great offer. I know better than that because we built the system, sure. but do you want to take a stab at the difference in why doing that up front, doing more up front yeah. made a difference? The way someone shows up to a property and what they expect, what they see and how they're willing to respond, do you yeah. want to take a shot at no, that? No, I will. Yeah. And I, I forget at times that, I mean, this is this is what we do on every property, right? And so I forget that it's not this way 99% of the time. But when we've got uh, 
a, a buyer that schedules a showing or a, an agent that calls me about a property. Uh, instead of me saying, it's a great house, come on out, you know, schedule a showing, let us know if you have any questions, super motivated seller. Um, I'm able to literally say, hey, what's your email address? Let me send you some stuff that will blow your mind. Not only has this seller um, already taken a bunch of time to make sure the house is great, which everyone would say that, right. I've got evidence of that and here's the difference. And so instead of them walking in and looking at the house and looking for, uh, you know, cracks in the wall or, you know, trying to figure out, Hey, right. is this a secure house? Is this going to be a good investment? Right. They are, they now have a list of a, a, an email full or right. multiple different information pieces that will show them here's the history, here's the status, here's the condition currently. Yep. And in this specific case, the reason I went with this one, the buyers were like, Oh my goodness, we've actually never seen this be provided before we were in a house. And they walked in and the agent was like, Hey, my buyers are, are fairly particular. They like to make sure the house is a good investment. Right. And they had no questions because when they walked in, they already knew everything there was. And they, they didn't have to take my word that it was in great shape. Yeah. And so I, I can spend two hours breaking down all of what you just said and the value of it. And which is why at the Todd Tremonti home selling team, we just, we come at it from a more strategic approach. And it's funny that you said that Jeremy is brilliant at executing this. And even he forgets sometimes the layers of strategy involved in it because it's become routine. Natural, yeah. You want someone working for you whose layers of strategy have simply become routine to them. But the uh, one of the bigger points that you made in there, whether you meant to or not, is they're looking at base, the exact same house, right? Now, did we present it slightly differently in person? Yes, but so much of what was done up ahead of time uh, was done so that they would be in a certain mental state level of confidence when they got there. If you're expecting to buy a home when you walk into a home, there's a much better chance you're gonna buy that house. Yeah. And you're probably gonna to wanna to buy it faster and pay more for it and not let anybody else get in your way. Um, some of the other things you mentioned was the way you answer the phone and the way you send emails and obviously video content, audio content, all those things. But different buyers, different consumers, different agents consume that information differently. So we're going to, we're willing to provide it for them in a lot of different ways and do so upfront. So we could get we could go down that rabbit yeah. hole for hours and hours and hours. Let's recap real quick. This was a seller in McKinney that had been on the market for more than the average time mm -hmm. it takes to sell a home with another agent. Now that agent had done an okay job. They had gotten a bunch of people mm -hmm. to the house. No offers that they were willing to look at or accept. I don't think there were any offers at all. No, no offers. Um, and then within, let's just call it a 48 hour period. I think yep. it was even less. You had it back on the market, presented completely differently, um, offers way above what they were even asking yep. before. Uh, client was thrilled. Buyers were thrilled. Buyer's agent was thrilled. Obviously, we were happy about it too. The job wasn't over. There was work to be done to get yep. that closed and funded, but that's all already long happened. And Jeremy's doing this some months, 10 or 12 times, some months, six or eight times, um, but at the very highest levels of, of this industry, yep. um, but not at a pace where people become numbers and, and become forgotten. Uh, I heard from this client in a couple of different ways how thrilled they were. Uh, and they had a very clear picture of what it could look like and what 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 success looked like. So anything else you would add just to the recap of how this happened over the average time, under the average time, and the client was thrilled. Yeah, no, I mean, overall, it was it was exactly like we advertised. They went online and, and uh, talked about the experience themselves. And so it, it is, uh, it's the perfect example of how we do what we do. And I, I think it was pretty self-explanatory. They trusted me. Mm -hmm. uh, they, again, I, I think I mentioned, they had kind of dictated how they wanted the process to go the first time, right. because that's what they were asked to do. They, what, what, what would you like to list your house right. for? You know, and so they trusted our system. They trusted our team. We came in, we did what we do best. Yep. And um, it's not just me, right? There's a full right. team of people. And uh, we were able to to do exactly what we promised. And they have now been thrilled and they've already sent us a few referrals over. Yep. And uh, the compounding effect has been awesome. Yeah. And, and, and what I love about that is when someone introduces you to their friends and family with confidence, they get joy out of that, right? Yeah. When, you, when you're when you like sending someone a name and you're not so sure, that's a nervous scenario. But when someone says, you've got to call Jeremy, you got to call the Tatramani Home Selling Team, and they're excited to introduce you to that opportunity, uh, it's fun. And it points to the fact that they enjoyed the process of being led through it, yeah. right? There's this stereotype out there that if your real estate agent's telling you what to do, you know, you've got some pushy jerk or whatever, but 
I mean, I want my doctor to tell me how to take care of my health. I want my CPA to tell me how to take care of my accounting. I want experts to be the expert. I can't, I don't have time and energy to be an expert at everything I need. Yeah. We're experts at this and great clients uh, want us to be the expert, right? And Jeremy's phenomenal at it. If you are ever thinking about selling a home and you would like to be one of these success stories to sell your home, way over the average price and well under the average time. You can find us online at overunderagent.com. You can call or text our office 214-310-0008. Feel free to ask for Jeremy or start with the office and we'll find the right agent, the perfect agent for your area, your time stage, life stage, property type, budget, whatever the case may be. We'd be thrilled to help you sell a home or of course buy. You can check us out online at overunderagent.com.